Okay, good morning from Morston Quay in North Norfolk. Had an early start this morning up at half five, about a 70 mile drive, but it's, uh, it's not the easiest place in the world to get to, despite the fact it's not that far away. But I'm not sure where I'm gonna go. Um, I'm not sure if I'm actually gonna do any radio now or uh, just paddle and then come back uh, later walk towards the sort of next village up the road there which is Blakeney which is about a mile or so along the uh, sea wall and then operate from the uh, marshes because it actually is a poter park uh, parks on the air park so anyway so I'm just going to go for a paddle and see how I get on there's a little bit of a breeze so those boats just back there and this one here uh, run uh, seal trips trips out to see the seals at Blakeney Point where there's a seal colony so over in the distance there is uh, Blakeney Point you might not be able to see it on the camera but there's an old lifeboat station there which is a kind of a bluey green building I'll find a picture of it okay, I've been going about 45 minutes now Done about two, just over two miles, and coming up the creek towards the uh, village Blakeney. And uh, high tides, so high tides in about 20 minutes or so. Okay, so I'm back at the campsite, as you can see. So that's about five miles that path just under. It's a bit windy. So I've got to pitch the tent. Okay, so I've got the tent up. Uh, this is supposedly a three-man tent. I've had it a few years. It's a Van Gogh Banshee 300. And, well, it's it's okay for one person <laughs> uh, you'd have to wear uh, three pretty small people three dwarfs are you allowed to say dwarf anymore I'm not sure you are sleeping bag done I'm just gonna keep the blankets at the uh, foot of the bed I don't think I'll need them but uh, they're there just in case I was thinking about going into uh, uh, going to uh, activate uh, the Pota Park which is up at Blakeney um, but uh, instead because um, I'm thinking that along from here the path will probably be quite busy there is a, a footpath that uh, sort of goes out onto the marshes and um, I could walk up there and then actually sort of go out onto the marsh but uh, there's actually if I come out of here and turn left or sort of uh, heading west from where I am there's actually a poter park up there as well which is probably a little bit clearer uh, nearer sorry and that's uh, Morston Cliff which is uh, poter references GB2035 so uh, I'm gonna go and do that so uh, anyway so I've got the uh, FX4CR the batteries there got my little analyzer and I'm using my AliExpress uh, special uh, vertical um, that was on a previous video and I've got something um, and I've also got a coil here which is a buddy pole buddy pole coil and so what I'm going to try and do if I can is get onto 40 meters uh, the thread on this AliExpress antenna here is a like a conventional uh, M10 thread whereas the buddy pole 
uh, is a three-eighths fitting, uh, which is the same as you'd get sort of on the base of a hamstick or whatever. So, uh, so that coil won't fit into uh, into the uh, AliExpress antenna. But on uh, Martin Lynch's son, uh, I purchased these two adapters here, and on the packet that uh, it uh, says it's uh, antenna adapters and it's uh, the make on there is Chelligans which is a, uh, a Chinese company I think they do a few sort of like these AliExpress aerials etc but anyway but the idea is is that uh, one of these is a 3 8 to M10 fitting uh, adapter and the other one is the other way around so basically if I, I can put one there onto the coil and then at the other end the other one and then it'll go onto the whip and uh, I've got the radials there um, but obviously uh, putting a coil on it's going to be quite narrow bandwidth so I'm going to take this little thing with me it's which is uh, also from AliExpress it's called an Ant Tuner AT100M Pro don't ask me for the link because they're easy to find. Just put Ant Tuner AT100M Pro. You can get them from Amazon as well, but uh, it's cheaper from AliExpress. And that's got a little uh, inbuilt battery in it, which is handy. And then I've got my uh, my feed here. Now, last time that I put the um, this vertical up on the salt marsh um, at home, uh, I tried it without radials. And, uh, and it worked because obviously you're getting a very good ground going into uh, into the salt marsh and somebody suggested which was a fair point that actually the uh, feed point or sorry the, the feed the coax was probably forming uh, the ground and I had for forgotten to mention there that actually at the feed point uh, that goes plugged into into there uh, I've got 25 type 31 ferrite cores beads uh, that go through the coax and the coax is uh, Messi and Poloni Airborne 5 so in theory what I'm thinking is is that that should stop the coax uh, radiating obviously stop any common mode coming back into the radio but also stop the uh, or prevent the uh, the coax from sort of forming the outer of the coax forming uh, the uh, the ground as it were so that's the theory anyway I'll tell you what you can't smell this gorse absolutely love the smell of that Got my ordnance survey map uh, or the app on my phone here so I'm just following the little blue dot and this is actually a public footpath I would imagine on a high tide that this pretty much gets flooded completely a little footbridge it's a bit precarious Ooh. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to set up here. I'm going to put the aerial in here. It's just a little bit boggy there, but kind of dry here. Okay, so you can see here where I've got the uh, ferrite beads. So I'm just going to go and dig that in there, uh, extend it and uh, see if I need to uh, to guy the uh, the whip itself okay I've tapped the uh, put the little uh, connector onto the sort of coil quite near the top and uh, the SWR is off the uh, off the scale okay I've just slid the banana plug up the uh, up the coil and it's uh, definitely it's getting more signal strength uh, as it gets towards the top, I have got uh, I have got another coil that would probably uh, work better, uh, which is a super antennas coil. But it slides up and down on a like on a collar, and it's sort of only really meant to be used with a really small whip. 
so it's not really going to wouldn't really work very well with this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, uh, just take the coil out put the whip straight into the uh, into the feed point there that's a little bit more like it so I'm on 20 meters here 14.180 uh, megs and it's uh, 1 to 1.5 so that's pretty good I don't know um, whether or not it's the fact that uh, that I've got no radials and I'm just dig dug into the uh, you know the fact that it's on 40 as opposed to 20 and um, it's just not getting the uh, capacitance that it needs in order to get a decent uh, match on uh, on 40 because it seems to work pretty well on 20 really uh, but anyway so um, I'm going to ponder that let me know what you think in the comments if you've got... uh, yeah you're also 5-9 thanks very much bye bye Thanks very much, you're also 5'9". Okay, thank you, 73, good luck. Yep, 7'3", thanks very much, bye-bye. But I worked one station that was a, a pota hunter and then um, park hunter. Uh, so uh, I only had four contacts, but I will put that into the um, Parks on the Air website. Uh, I'm going to put those four contacts in so that he can get his uh, chaser point but I'm not really massively into parks on the air anyway um, but I'm starting to get cold so uh, I'm going to uh, chuck everything in a bag head back to the campsite my knees are filthy <laughs> so it looks quite dry but then when you uh, when you sort of sit down or when you uh, sort of like when I'm just kneeling there you, uh, you kind of sink in and then before you know it, you're sort of squelching around in the mud. Uh, just going to sort my stuff out because I just sort of chucked it hastily into the bag. And it's gone four o'clock, so I think it's reasonable to uh, crack open a Stella. Stella Artois. Lovely. <laughs>